this is part two of the tips from Malia Lab. So let's say that your offenses tab looks something like this, where you have seven pages or more of offenses. This is not actionable. There's no way you can investigate all these things. So you need to reduce the, there's a bunch of false positives. The, the, the good news about Curera is has tremendous amount of logic. So very seldom you will have to create a rule and whatever rule you don't have out of the box, you bring it from the app exchange. And so no need to do the logic. The, the bad news is that, well, with all that logic, if you don't just put it in there and all those things are enabled, you're going to get a whole bunch of false positive. So this is not the place for you to tune that. The place for, for you to tune it is to go into the use case manager and let me actually, this is the, I, I was in there before, and go into this tune most active rule this is these are the rules that fires the most and i already made the search for the last month and these are my rules so now why this is the place for tuning that well let's say that we fix and we will fix this particular rule well this rule let's actually start with the investigation but notice that is 47 percent of all my rules are is that you know, we got 437 rules. If I fix this rule, I'm knocking down 437 rules. Uh, potentially, if 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 all of them are false positives. But now let's see this one, and, and they might be because otherwise you are under tremendous level of attack if you see something like this, right? So. We look at the rule and the rule says, and the event category matches either malware backdoor, malware Trojan, or malware virus detector. You don't need to worry about these building blocks. We can actually see them, but uh, this is something that the curator developer put there for you. So whenever a, a, a parser is created and the parser detects some sort of a malware backdoor, well, if it fits that category, then the parser knows that, the category gets assigned, and this rule with only one test condition is going to fire. Uh -huh. So, where is the tuning that you can actually do here? Well, the, the important part in here is to go into the log source type. Obviously, among these log source types, you are getting some of them that are giving you false positive. In my case, this is my demo system. I fire a bunch of logs that have attacks in it. So in my case, I know that these things are true attacks. But you, this is something that I will do if this will be a normal system and check, well, do I have a noisy parser in here? Or do I have a parser that has the wrong category? Do I need to update the parser? Because somehow the category of a particular event is labeled as one of these three and therefore the rule is actually uh, firing. Another thing you can actually do is go here in order to be even more effective in this review is that these are all the offenses, this is offense ID, where this rule contributed to. There might be in an offense, as you know in Curera, there might be more than one offense contributing to that, one or more rules contributing to that offense. But at least in all of them we should find this rule contributing to it. And one thing that you can also do is, let me see the noises one, the one that generate the most events. And you know, you can select them like in, in here and click here on that particular offense. And if I display the rules, I'm sure that I should find this one in here. And that's precisely that particular rule. But if I go to the events, I may actually investigate these, you know, oops, I missed that, all these particular events, and you see that most of them are coming in this case from, I guess that is India, right? So again, you can click on, look, notice that it's the same source IP to multiple destinations, so again, you will, these are real attacks because this, they come from the logs I replay. But this is something you may actually want to see. And you see the checkpoint firewall as one of the log sources uh, in it, right? It might be that this checkpoint firewall as a source is 
having something that it leads to false positive and you need to investigate that. Or perhaps it is a noisy box that is not configured and you may actually want to disable that log source into Curator in order to minimize those particular events because this firewall is noisy, it's generating false positive. So you can, if you disable this log source, then you will be dealing, that will be one way of dealing with this particular offense. Let's go back to the use case manager and go into active rules here and, and see other examples. And in, here are the, the, the top, top ones. I mean, again, you kill one of them every week and you are doing yourself a big favor here. Let me actually uncheck this to see other log sources and see if I can show you something else, some tips I learned from Ali on tuning this. If I click investigate, okay, I don't like this second page, but here is the stuff is good. I see the logic of the actual rule and this is the traffic is internal, local to local, and more on the network hierarchy, which is key for this later in, in the video that we will talk about the network hierarchy. And there are some ports that Windows normally use. We can actually review this later, but this is something again that the developers put in there for you, so it is not likely that you will need to check, but it might be that the problem is in here on the threshold. So let's actually click here, modify threshold and see, well, probably, you know, it is 200 destination IP in 20 minutes uh, coming from the same source IP four times. This is something that I, I need to understand the logic of the rule and maybe it might be normal in some cases, but I need to modify them in some others. Let's see another example. Let's see if I can find one. Again, I'm going to flip this to go into other offenses and I'm going to look for... Oh, this is a one that I see often. Large outbound. Let's click here, investigate. Let's go to the third page. And this is kind of key. Well, first of all, Let's click here on the threshold because that's what we will most likely modify this one. And when the source byte is greater than 200,000, well, is that too big? Or maybe the type of business that we do these days, that is not big enough. And I need to increase this because otherwise this will be normal traffic and it was going to be firing all the time. More on the network hierarchy later, but this reflects that this from the inside out, this is data being exfiltrated and the bias, the flow bias is mostly outbound. And I see 10 flows to the same source and destination port, destination IP in 12 minutes. Well, do I need to modify that? Because again, this can be normal traffic that this threshold, by modifying this threshold, I will be reducing the false positive on those rules. Let's go back to the active rules and see one more before this video becomes uh, too big. Let me scroll down and see if I find... Uh, let me actually go here to the last one. Detected excessive usage. Okay, this might be a good example to say, well, you know what? This event, and this is actually a malicious one uh, uh, that, that Wing Collect uh, brought to me, uh, but let's say that this, you have a machine, a Windows machine that performs these things and that is not an offense. This machine, for some strange reason, behaves that way. Or you get too many login failures, but it's from this particular username, which for that username is not an offense. I know it's okay. Or something happened with this particular source IP or host name and you want to make an exception in the rule for that so your rule doesn't fire on it. But one way you can actually do that is go to the rules wizard. And in this one, notice that the last condition is that uh, log source. So you can actually type here on the filter log source. And you say, well, you click on this one to add this condition to the button. And you go here on the log sources. And let's say that I have a Win7 machine, which again, behave like this and it's not something malicious. Let's see if I see 
let's say that is this Win7 machine, right? So I click Add, I click Submit, and then that becomes that condition. And all you need to do here is click on the AND, click once, and it becomes AND not, meaning I'm excluding when I'm evaluating all these test conditions. If it happened to that Windows machine, uh, forget about it, that's not a false positive. Therefore, you have tuned your rules not to fire in this particular condition. Again, same thing for hostname, IPs, or whatever is it that you want to make an exception of. This video is getting a little bit too long, but let me show you something else that might be useful when you are doing tuning. It might be the case that you are working in this particular case with this particular rule, but this rule has two dependencies, which are two other building blocks. Uh, okay, you can actually try to understand that by looking into different ways, and it's, it's almost impossible to find it. But you don't have to, because in here you have this way of graphically looking at the dependencies. So this particular rule has these two dependencies, the building blocks, definition, exploit and backdoor Trojan, and this one, post exploit account activity. And you can see all these dependencies, you know, and what this depends on. There's nothing here on the left, so this is not the case, but this is a simple one. But again, this one is a simple case, but it might be a more complex one in which this graph allows you to see what depends on, on what. And you can actually flip here from the view to the actual, you know, this uh, textual view. And you can even click here and see what is actually in this building block or that or the building block. Okay. I, I don't see customers actually modifying this because this is something that the, uh, the IBM folks, this is the beauty of Curator, that they put all these categories in here and then when the parser finds that something fits the, the right category, if somebody that wrote the parser did a good job on it, then automatically these rules begin to work for you, regardless of the brand name, regardless of the type. And that's the magic of, uh, of uh, the, the normalization that Curator does. The next video, we're going to talk about the events are the noises instead of the number of events they dispatch.